Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India class uh, to our course uh, mechanical behavior of materials so uh, uh, myself uh, professor sudhanshu sethar singh uh, i am assistant professor in the department of uh, material science and engineering iit kanpur so till now professor sushant sethar was uh, talking to you about uh, you know this course and he has already discussed uh, Uh, about elasticity and plasticity and he focused on the characteristics of dislocations right dislocation interaction forces of dislocations energy of dislocations etc so what i am going to do i am going to uh, discuss about uh, strengthening mechanisms right so uh, how dislocations uh, interact with other microstructural features present in the uh, material in any uh, given system okay and because of that you are going to increase the strength in that particular system so what are the different mechanisms uh, present uh, which can be used to increase the strength so we are going to discuss uh, from today okay so let's begin let me share the screen okay so uh, uh, so we are going to talk about um, methods of strengthening okay so basically suppose i give you a piece of aluminum okay pure alum aluminum and i ask you hey can you increase the strength of this piece this piece of aluminum right so what can you do as a material scientist you should be you, you must know what are the different methods are there to increase to enhance the strength of this given metal pure metal okay or say pure aluminum right so there there are different uh, mechanisms uh, to enhance the strength we are going to discuss uh, that also and in uh, other than pure aluminum suppose this is alloy then how do you increase the strength right so all these mechanisms related to increase in the strength of uh, a given alloy we are going to talk about it okay so basically what is happening uh, in in all the uh, strengthening mechanisms uh, the dislocations are going to play a very significant role okay so basically dislocations are going to interact with the microstructural features present in a given system and and these microstructural features are going to restrict the movement of dislocations and thereby increasing the strength of a given system professor sashan sekar must have told you right the one of the ways to increase the strength is to restrict the movement of dislocation and that is the crux here right somehow you have to restrict the movement of dislocations and thereby increasing the strength and that is what all mechanisms strengthening mechanisms are based on okay so what we are doing we are increasing the strength okay by restricting the movement of dislocations okay and when you do that you are increasing the strength of the material right so now the question is since we have to restrict the movement of dislocation they have to interact with some microstructural features right so dislocations can interact with 
many microstructural features and I'm going to list all of them one by one. And then I'm going to tell you based on the interaction of dislocation with that particular microstructural feature, what is the name of the mechanism, okay? So you have dislocation interaction with, so dislocations can interact with different microstructural features and the first is other dislocations. Okay, so dislocations can interact with other dislocations. Now in the driven system, you can also have brain boundaries. So dislocations can interact with brain boundaries. Okay, then if we are talking about say alloy system, not pure uh, metal, right? You, you are going to also have solute atoms present in the alloy. So dislocations can interact with the solute atoms. Okay. Now in certain alloy systems, you are going to have precipitates present in the system. Okay, so dislocations can also interact with, say, precipitates. Okay, and we have one more, which is called dispersoids. So I'm going to discuss all of them, right? I'm going to also talk about what are different precipitates, okay? How these precipitates form, what are dispersoids, etc. Dislocations, you already know. Drain boundaries, you also know. Solute atoms, you also know, right? So we are going to discuss all of them one by one. Now, so if a dislocation is going to interact with other dislocations and thereby enhancing the strength of a given system, the mechanism is called as strain hardening. Okay, or we also call it as work hardening. Okay. Now, if the dislocation, dislocations are going to interact with the drain boundaries, they are getting piled up at the drain boundaries and thereby enhancing the strength, this mechanism is called drain boundary strengthening. Okay, now the third one is solute atoms, right? So I mentioned that whenever we talk about alloys, there might be some solute atoms, right? In the system, right? So these solute atoms are also going to interact with the dislocations and thereby enhancing the strength and that particular mechanism is going to be called as solid solution. Strengthening. Okay. Now, if dislocations are interacting with precipitates and thereby increasing the strength, the mechanism is called precipitation strengthening. Okay, and the last one, 
now you know right this this is going to be called as dispersion strengthening okay so again i am reiterating right that what is happening the dislocations are going to interact with these microstructural features present in a given system and thereby the strength of that given system is going to be increased right and depending upon the microstructural features with which dislocations are interacting the name is given like that so if it is in dislocations are interacting with the other dislocations we will call it as strain hardening or work hardening if dislocations are interacting with the drain boundaries we call it drain boundary strengthening okay and if this and say similarly right if precipitates are present in a given system and dislocations are in, uh, interacting then we call it precipitation strengthening but again remember the crux is that you have to restrict the movement of dislocations to increase the strength and all these microstructural features right whatever i have listed here so all these microstructural features are actually going to restrict the movement of dislocations and that's how they are going to increase the strength of the system okay so now we are going to talk about all of these one by one but uh, today i am going to start talking about precipitation strengthening okay so let's talk about precipitation strengthening first okay so precipitation strengthening is also called as sometimes air hardening this is also called as age hardening okay? and i will tell you why this name is given as age hardening especially for aluminum alloys okay? so we are going to discuss about this so now this precipitation strengthening mechanism is a well known strengthening mechanism right for enhancing the strength of aluminum alloys okay so in in the lecture what whatever i am going to explain we are going to mostly focus on aluminum alloys and then we'll try to understand right the underlying concept of this particular mechanism again based on mostly on aluminum alloys okay so now suppose you are uh, you have flown through you know aircraft right so aircraft uh, in the aircraft there are many components which are made of aluminum alloys and typically uh, some of them are going to show precipitation strengthening also okay so uh, suppose i take a piece of aluminum or that particular component or alloy which is uh, used to make a component of aluminum alloy and we stand so precipitation strengthening okay and i start polishing it so that i can observe the microstructure Okay, so you start polishing it, and then you etch it, and you, then you take the sample to you know an opt optical microscope, right? And if you do that, you are going to see a microstructure what I have shown here. Okay, the first one. So this is a typical microstructure of an aluminum alloy which has been rolled, and that's why you see L and S and T here. So you see L. s and t here you are not required to go through the details but let me tell you so it since this has been rolled the l direction is called as longitudinal direction and t is called transverse direction and the, along the thickness right so if it is a rolled so you have this roll plate right so along this direction the vertical direction this is s so we call it short transverse in the direction where it has been rolled along with uh, it it has been rolled we call it longitudinal direction l and then this direction right will be called as transverse direction 
Okay, and this is the typical microstructure here I am showing for aluminum 7075 alloys. So 7075 alloys is, 7 series is uh, one of the uh, series of uh, aluminum alloy. Okay, anyway, uh, we will not go into that much uh, details about all the series, uh, 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 a list of series for aluminum alloy. Okay. So what you see typically here is if you see in optical microscope, you are going to observe uh, um, drains. So you can see all these drains here. Right? So you can see drains here. You can see drains here and all these drain drains. Then you can also observe these inclusions. So these dark particles, what you see, we call it inclusions. Okay. So these inclusions in 7075 aluminum alloys, are silicon rich or iron rich inclusions. We don't want them, but they will be present in the aluminum alloy. Okay. But what I wanted to uh, inform here is see the my, uh, scale bar here. Right. So this is 300 micron meter. Okay. Now, if I start magnifying right, this microstructure, what I am going to observe is what I have shown here in the second image. Okay, now see the scale bar here. This is 500 nanometer compared to the scale bar in the first image, which is 300 nanometer uh, micron meter. You can see a very fine particles, right? All these particles. You can see all these particles, right? So these fine particles, which you are going to observe at high magnification in aluminum alloys, we call these particles or phase as precipitates. Okay, so in aluminum alloys, you have to go to high magnification to observe. So this is actually a TEM image, transmission electron, micro, uh, transmission electron microscopy image, okay. And this is your optical image. Okay, so you understand the difference here. Okay, so that's how that's that's why I have mentioned here decreasing length scale. So you are actually decreasing the length scale as you move from an image from optical microscope and then image from TEM image. Okay, so typically in the case of aluminum alloys, you might not uh, you are not going to observe uh, these precipitates. These are in nanometer size. Okay, so you have to use TEM to observe these uh, small precipitates. Now, these precipitates, which are very, very fine, they are going to restrict the movement of dislocations. And since the movement of dislocations is restricted, you are going to increase the strength of the alloy system. Okay, and that's why the name is given as precipitation strengthening or precipitation hardening. Okay, because you are using these precipitates to increase the strength of a given alloy system. Okay, so now you know the uh, size of the precipitates are very, very fine. Okay, now the next question uh, uh, is, uh, you know, how do we generate these precipitates, right? Can all the alloy systems give you, especially in aluminum alloys, can every aluminum alloy will give you precipitation strengthening, right? So we will discuss that now.